the International Court of Justice, my friends and colleagues uh, from the diplomatic community, I'm so happy to see all of you, members of the Sri Lankan community from the Buddhist Sangha here in the Netherlands, ladies and gentlemen. I'm truly both honored and humbled to be invited by the Ambassador of Sri Lanka to deliver the guest lecture on this very special day, the International Day of Visak, on this very special day when we mark the International Day of Visak. The actual day was a few weeks earlier, but this is the convenient time that we found. The day which marks the birth, the enlightenment, as well as what is known as the Pari Nirvana, the passing away of the man known as the Buddha. You just saw a movie about him. And as already pointed out by Judge Bandari, it is particularly appropriate that we gather for this function here in the Gandhi Center, a center named after the father of the Indian nation, Mahatma Gandhi, who was a living embodiment of Buddha's teachings and ideals, but also a center established by the Indian government, by the Indian Council for Cultural Relations, to spread not just Indian culture in terms of its music, dance, or art, but also in terms of its philosophy, in terms of its ideals, in terms of the great sons of India like the Buddha, who uh, have appeared on the earth. So I am I'm, I'm truly humbled and honored. And let me say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this event is also a special event, but a slightly sad event, because it is the swan song of Ambassador Sadiq, who will be leaving the Netherlands soon. He is completing his tenure here. And he has not just been a good friend, but an outstanding diplomat and one of the nicest human beings that you can ever find anywhere in the world. Please give him a big hand of applause. I think he, for us from India, uh, he has been like an extended member of the Indian community here, of our uh, Indian family here. Uh, he has done outstanding service, not just for Sri Lanka, and not just for Sri Lanka-Netherlands relations, but also to bring people of all countries, all religions, all communities together in the common cause of peace, harmony, and understanding. And I think his work will be remembered for a very, very long time, even after he leaves. And he is, though he himself is, a, if I can say so, a religious Muslim, but he embodies the principles of Buddha in every sense of the word. So please, give him one more round of applause. Since I started off saying, uh, I was I'm very humbled and honored, and as I was coming up, uh, I, I was just remembering, and I say this with a little trepidation because I see people from many Buddhist countries uh, here, people who probably know Buddhism much better than I do. I, my, uh, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the Buddha, I'm a fan of the Buddhist religion, but I'm not a practicing Buddhist by any means. Uh, and every one of us in, in India study Buddhism more from our history books rather than as a religion. So there is a difference in which we approach the religion as and the Buddha as compared to people of Myanmar, people of Sri Lanka, people of Thailand, people uh, Cambodia, Vietnam. So you, you, the list goes on and on, even China, Japan. And I, I was remembering, uh, I think, if at all anything qualifies for me uh, for this lecture, it is two uh, brief encounters I've had with Buddhism. One, I see the Thai ambassador in our midst. One, I, I, as a young student, I went and spent uh, a few days in a Buddhist monastery on the borders of Thailand and Cambodia. Uh, it was a Buddhist monastery where it was essentially run by the international community. Uh, and there I learned a lesson which I remember forever. Uh, in Thailand, I was told the Buddhist, many of the Buddhist monks, the truly, there are all kinds of monks, but the, the true practitioners of Buddhism, whenever they meet each other, they immediately fall at the feet of the person they meet. 
uh, and the person who receives that prostration from one person immediately repeats that gesture to them. I found this just this this uh, practice very similar to India's own practice of saying namaste to people uh, when they meet each other, and that in that namaste, what in India we say is that what I bow to when I say namaste means I bow to you, is to the God within you. There is God within each and every human being, and as we greet each other, we see that God in the others, and we greet that godliness in every single human being, which makes all of us one, irrespective of our color, irrespective of our language, irrespective of where we come from, irrespective of what religion we practice. But Buddhism, as I learned it in Thailand, truly takes it one step forward, because when you fall at the feet of a person, that is truly the ultimate humbling of yourself that you can do. You are effectively saying, look, you are greater than me, you are superior to me. You are a more important person than me. And if one person can kill, or if each one of us can kill our ego, to the extent that we can fall at any stranger's feet and say, look, there is a God in you, and you are greater than me, then that is the first step towards acquiring greater control over yourself. Killing your ego, killing your arrogance, killing your anger, killing all those sources from which evil arises from within you as human beings. And that, I think, is a great step forward, even beyond the namaste that we Indians say to each other. But the Buddhism uh, goes even further. The person who receives this prostration immediately feels so embarrassed. Look, who am I to, be, to have another human being prostrate himself at my feet?